भगवत अर्हतो सम्मा संबुत नमो तस् भगवत अर्हतो सम्मा संबुत नमो तस् भगवत अर्हतो सम्मा संबुत साधु साधु Uh, so uh, just now uh, we have a rains retreat so there is a background chanting going on i'm sorry for that but uh, this is the uh, thing which happens uh, throughout the rains retreat and a uh, uh, couple of months after that so uh, we will uh, we are starting with the sutta which uh, is 152 indriya bhava sutta the development of the faculties This is a, a sutta which is a little bit different from other suttas which we have uh, taken in the past because uh, uh, most of the time Buddha talks about indriya samvara that is uh, to uh, kind of restrain your senses. Over here, the Buddha is talking now about how to develop your senses and how uh, you can uh, do it in the different stages. So uh, first, uh, we'll uh, start with what uh, what is happening with the Buddha. Thus have I heard. मच्छी में निकाय 152, the development of the facet faculties. Thus I have heard. On one occasion, the blessed one was living in Kanjagala in the grove of Mukelu trees. Then the Brahmin uh, student Uttara, a pupil of the Brahmin Parasaraya, went to the blessed one and exchanged greeting with him. When this courteous and amiable talk was finished. He sat down at one side. The blessed one then asked him, "Uttara, does the Brahmin Parasarya teach his disciples the development of the faculties?" He does, Master Gautama. But Uttara, how does he teach his disciples the development of the faculties? Here, uh, Master Gautama, one does not see forms with the eye, one does not hear sounds with the ear. that is how brahmin parasarya teaches his disciples development of faculties so uh, what uh, uh, the uh, the brahmin who is teaching his student is uh, asking his student to, to do is not to uh, look at anything or not to listen to anything and thus by uh, kind of uh, being able to control your uh, inputs what you get from uh, sensory uh, uh, feelings that is the way he wants to Kind of uh, uh, say that you will be able to develop your mind by uh, avoiding uh, sensory inputs into uh, your mind. That is how the Brahmin Parasarya teaches his disciples uh, the development of the faculties. If that is so, Uttara, then a blind man and a deaf man will have developed faculties according to what the Brahmin Parasarya says. For a blind man does not see. Forms with the eyes, and the deaf man does not hear sounds with the ear. When this was said, the Brahmin student Uttara, Parasarya's pupil, sat silent, dismayed, with shoulders drooping and head down, glum and without response. So the Buddha says that if you are not uh, receiving the sensory uh, uh, stimulus, is the answer to kind of develop your uh, understanding about those. sensory inputs then uh, just by uh, the fact that a blind person cannot see or a, 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 a deaf person cannot hear he would have developed the uh, faculties but that is not the case uh, even if a blind person does not see or a deaf person does not hear then uh, still he has uh, the same process of the mind the mind uh, how the mind is working and how a person is uh, interacting with sensory uh, stimulus does not change in this case then knowing this the blessed one addressed the uh, venerable ananda ananda the brahmin parasarya teaches his disciples the development of the faculties in one way but in the noble one's disciple discipline the supreme development of the faculties is otherwise now is the time blessed one now is the time sublime one for the blessed one to teach the supreme development of the faculties in the noble one's discipline having heard it from the blessed one the bhikkhus or the students will remember it then listen ananda and attend closely to what i shall say yes venerable sir he replies the blessed one said this now ananda how is there the supreme development of the faculties in the blessed one's discipline 
here ananda when a bhikkhu or a student sees a form with the eyes there arises in him what is agreeable there arises what is disagreeable there arises what is both agreeable and disagreeable so now uh, what uh, the buddha is saying that when uh, you see something there can be a, a reaction which is there uh, which is a, a default reaction based on your habitual tendencies that is agreeable disagreeable and it can be a combination of agreeable and disagreeable so that is the kind of reaction which happens based based on your uh, habitual tendencies which is there uh, when there is a contact uh, there is a feeling and when there is a feeling which is a pleasant uh, 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 unpleasant or uh, neither pleasant or unpleasant so that is uh, uh, the thing which happens automatically the uh, uh, which we cannot control at that point of time how we uh, uh, react to it is uh, what the buddha is kind of pointing out he understands thus there has arisen in me what is agreeable there has arisen uh, what is disagreeable there has arisen what is both agreeable and disagreeable so uh, we see that uh, one person uh, uh, or a person uh, or a practitioner or a student uh, when he uh, uh, sees that reaction then he realizes that this is the thing and on sunday we had taken a sutra where the buddha is saying how one person can uh, for himself uh, understand that if he has attained nibbana or not in the same way uh, he says that you have to look with wisdom so when uh, uh, we uh, say uh, from our right effort uh, point of view that is the six hours then this is the recognized step he recognizes that there is an uh, agreeable uh, reaction there is a disagreeable reaction and a reaction which is both agreeable and disagreeable but that is conditioned gross dependently arisen Uh, so what uh, one understands is recognize uh, when uh, when recognizes then what he does is he also understands that it is conditioned conditioned means that it is impermanent so whatever is born has uh, uh, the death uh, associated with it it is gross which which means that it, it is also dukkha and dependently arisen means it is impersonal it is not a person uh, it is dependently arisen is paticca samupada the pali word is paticca samupada so uh, the uh, word for the uh, dependent origination uh, is used over here so that means that it is not uh, a, a person uh, it is a, a impersonal process so if a happens then you react in b so if uh, a stimulus is there you see a flower then you feel uh, that there is an agreeable Uh, 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 feeling which arises, but if you see a, a, a kind of a, a pile of rubbish, then uh, a disagreeable uh, 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 feeling arises. So this happens uh, as a, a way of uh, 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 action and reaction, habitual tendencies. So what a, a, a student understands is that this is conditioned. So this is conditioned. This is something which has come upon based on the uh, 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 the factor of uh, conditioning. That is sankharas, sankhatan. So this is a sankhara. It is gross means it is dukha, olarakam, and it is dependently arisen uh, or arisen. That is paticcha samujara, and that is the uh, uh, kind of a default. What has happened? this is peaceful this is sublime that is equanimity so upekha so uh, he recognizes that uh, uh, equanimity is sublime and peaceful the agreeable that arose the disagreeable that arose and the both agreeable and disagreeable that arose sees in him equanimity is established so what he does is he takes uh, his attention up away from Uh, the agreeable the disagreeable and both the agreeable and disagreeable and puts its uh, attention on the equanimity so this is the same thing uh, of uh, how uh, we are kind of teaching the six r that is you recognize uh, what has arisen you uh, release you relax re smile and return to uh, what is uh, the wholesome or what is your object of meditation over here 
the Buddha is saying your object of meditation is equanimity. So when you return to equanimity, then equanimity is established in your mind. Just as a man with a good sight, uh, having opened his eyes, shut, uh, might shut them, or having shut his eyes, might open them. So that, uh, so too, concerning anything that at all, the agreeable the, that arose, the disagreeable that arose, and both the agreeable and disagreeable that arose, cease just as quickly, just as rapidly, just as easily, and equanimity is established. This happens after some practice. He's saying like in the blink of an eye, uh, what has arisen uh, will uh, be replaced by equanimity. So uh, uh, that is the advice what Bhante Vimal Ramsey also gives, is that when there is a, uh, uh, your mind is distracted, then you have to do the six R, but not repeat it. So it is a process which happens fast. So, uh, uh, and then uh, he uses other similes also in the sutta for other uh, uh, aspects. Uh, the similes uh, the Buddha is using is just as a strong mind, uh, a strong man may easily snap a finger like this. Just as raindrops on a slightly sloping uh, lotus leaf roll off and do not remain there. So if there's a lotus leaf and there's a raindrop, it can just slip off easily. Uh, just as a strong mind, my, um, a man might easily spit out a ball of spittle collected uh, on the tip of the tongue. Just as a strong mind might flex his arm or, or ex extend it. Uh, so uh, this, is, this happens very fast. Just as if a man were to let two or three drops of water fall onto an iron plate heated for a whole day. The falling of the dr drops might be slow, but they would quickly vaporize and vanish. So the Buddha is giving different symbols in different uh, aspects, showing how quickly this can be uh, replaced. This is called the Noble One's uh, dis discipline, the supreme development of the faculties regarding forms cognizable by the eye. In the same way, Again, Ananda, when a bhikkhu hears a sound with the ear, smells an odor with the nose, tastes a flavor with the tongue, touches a tangible with the body, cognizes a mind object with the mind. So, any uh, sense uh, object where there is a sensory uh, uh, interaction and one uh, uh, realizes that it is agreeable, disagreeable, or uh, both agreeable and disagreeable, one lets that go, recognizes, releases that, and uh, returns back uh, with, uh, uh, as we change to six hours, relaxing and smiling, returns back to the equanimity. And it happens in a fast manner uh, where the simile has been given, like uh, just a blink of an eye, or just like uh, extending an arm, or just like uh, putting uh, a drop of water in a hot plate. So that, that is a, a simile which is given, to, uh, uh, and this is uh, called the Noble One's Discipline, the supreme development of the faculties regarding forms cognizable by the eye or the, uh, uh, or the sounds cognizable by the ears, odor cognizable by the nose, flavor cognizable by the tongue, tangible, cognizes, cognizable by the body, ideas cognizable by the mind. So this happens in all the cases. This is how the development, supreme development of the faculties in the do, do, uh, noble one dis, uh, discipline. So now this uh, uh, has been uh, taught for any uh, individual who is practicing. But uh, now the Buddha is uh, going to the next level. That this is the uh, practice which a, a, any individual will be able to do. But if uh, how does the practice change for somebody who has attained uh, the path? The attaining the path means who is a sotapanna, who is still not uh, become an arahan. So how does that uh, uh, individual change uh, the practice? So this is how uh, now he will be explaining that. And now and how Ananda is one a disciple in higher training, one who has entered upon the way, 
So the entered upon the way is an indication of uh, a sota panna. Here, Ananda, when a uh, student sees a form with the eye, hears a sound with the ear, smells an odor with the nose, tastes a flavor with the tongue, touches a tangible with the body, cognizes a mind object with the mind, there arises in him what is agreeable, there arises what is disagreeable, there arises what is both agreeable and disagreeable. He is repelled, humiliated, and disgusted by the agreeable that arose, by the disagreeable that arose, and by the both agreeable and disagreeable that arose. That is how one is a disciple in higher training, one who has entered upon the way. So now what the Buddha is saying that when a, a, a student progresses to the another level, when he is a sotapanna, then whatever sensory reaction is there, he uh, sees that reaction and there is a, 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 a reaction which is he is repelled, humiliated and disgusted. So uh, the Pali words used is atiyati, hariyati and jugati. So now what happens is uh, this is a reaction of uh, which is very similar uh, to the uh, reaction which is uh, mentioned in uh, some other suttas uh, which is on the path to Nibbana uh, that is disenchantment and uh, dispassion. So I'll just uh, kind of on the side note I'll uh, read you the uh, Angotra Nikaya 11, Book of 11, the first sutta of the Book of 11. So to just give a kind of context about why this uh, uh, Buddha is saying that one is disgusted or repelled by what is happening. So uh, uh, this is a kind of an example or giving a context to the sutta. So I'll just uh, quickly read this sutta, which is Anguruta Rikaya, Book of Eleven, uh, sutta number one, this, which is dependence. Uh, so it is uh, the sutta is also called What Purpose Thus Have I Heard? On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling at Savati in Jetha's Grove. Anatha Pindika's park. Then the Venerable Ananda approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, sat down to one side and said to him, Bhante, what is the purpose and benefit of wholesome virtuous behavior? Ananda, the purpose and benefit of wholesome virtuous behavior is non-regret. And what, Bhante, is the purpose and benefit of non-regret? The purpose and benefit of non-regret is joy. And what is the purpose and uh, benefit of uh, joy? The purpose and benefit of joy is rapture. And what is the purpose and benefit of rapture? The purpose and benefit of rapture is tranquility. And what is the uh, purpose and benefit of tranquility? The purpose of benefit of uh, tranquility is pleasure. And what is the purpose and benefit of uh, pleasure? The purpose and benefit of pleasure is collectedness. And what? Uh, is the purpose and benefit of collectedness. The purpose and benefit of collectedness is knowledge and vision of things as they really are. So that is the purpose of uh, collectedness. But after this, what happens is important to us. What is the purpose and benefit of knowledge and vision of things as they really are? The purpose and benefit of knowledge and, uh, and vision of things as they really are is disenchantment. And what is the purpose and benefit of disenchantment? The purpose and benefit of disenchantment is dispassion. So we see that over here, the Buddha is, say, is uh, saying uh, in the, uh, uh, the progression of things is Dispassion and disenchantment are the uh, kind of steps uh, before uh, the last step, which is there. And what is the purpose and benefit of dispassion? The purpose and benefit of dispassion is the knowledge and vision of liberation. Vimutta jnana dashana. So uh, this is about the release, vimutti. So uh, dispassion and uh, uh, what happens is uh, disenchantment are both the factors which happen just before you are uh, uh, reaching awakening. So uh, we have to look at this uh, thing up in the context of that. So when there is a uh, sensory uh, uh, kind of input in the eye, uh, 
uh, in the ear, nose, tongue, body, or the mind, uh, one gets uh, uh, dis disenchanted with it, and uh, there is dispassion towards it. The one uh, one uh, becomes kind of not interested in the uh, agreeableness of uh, things which arises. He becomes not interested in the disagreeable nature of the things. He uh, becomes disinterested in the agreeable and disagreeable things. So he kind of uh, pulls back uh, from what uh, sensory uh, inputs are coming up because he understands the true nature of the uh, sensory uh, objects which are coming up. Because one, it is impermanent. Second, it is dukkha. And third, it is impersonal. It is anatta. So uh, he understands and thus uh, he do, uh, does not uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, deal with it or uh, engage with it. So that is the stage, which is the second stage. Now the uh, Buddha goes to the third stage. This is a little bit uh, complicated and uh, uh, you have to kind of listen to it uh, uh, clearly because uh, over here the Buddha is go uh, going to the stage where he's talking about somebody who has mastered the senses. So it could be an indication of somebody who is an anagami or an arahant. So uh, over here uh, the Buddha says, and how ananda is one a noble one with developed faculties. Now he uses the word noble one with developed faculties. Here ananda, when a, a student uh, sees a form with the eye, hears a sound with the ear, smells a odor with the nose, tastes a flavor with the tongue, touches a tangible with the body, cognizes a mind object with the mind. There arises in him what is agreeable. There arises what is disagreeable. There arises what is both agreeable and disagreeable. So one thing we have to note is that the habitual tendency of the mind does not change uh, uh, now also. When there is a, a, a pin prick, even if the arahant is there, the uh, pain which is there uh, is recognized as disagreeable. If there is a food which is a, a kind of a present tasting food, uh, even an arahant has, he recognizes that this is a, a, pasting, uh, a pleasant tasting uh, food. Uh, even an uh, anagami. When he has food, he will be able to recognize the food as being uh, tasted, uh, is uh, a, a good tasting food, but there will be no attachment. So uh, that is uh, what uh, uh, the mind state of an uh, awakened one is there or a person who has fully trained himself. So uh, the uh, person who has developed his faculties. So one thing has to be uh, said that the person who is an arahant or an anagami is not a uh, uh, kind of a robot or a, a zombie. He has uh, the sensory access to everything. If he should wish, may I abide perceiving the unrepulsive in the repulsive. He abides perceiving the unrepulsive in the repulsive. So what uh, uh, a uh, person who has developed his faculty is, he will be able to perceive something which is uh, which is uh, unrepulsive. Okay, he will be able to perceive it as repulsive, or he can uh, 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 perceive which is uh, repulsive as being unrepulsive, and he can abide perceiving which is uh, uh, agreeable and disagreeable as unrepulsive or as uh, repulsive as he wants. If he should wish, I, I abide perceiving the unrepulsive in the repulsive and the unrepulsive. He abides perceiving the unrepulsive in repulsive and unrepulsive. If he should wish, may I abide perceiving repulsive in the unrepulsive and repulsive. He abides perceiving the repulsive in the uh, uh, repulsive and unrepulsive. If he should wish, may I avoid May I, avoiding both repulsive and unrepulsive, abide in equanimity, mindful and fully aware. He abides in equanimity towards that, mindful and fully aware. That is how one is a noble one with developed faculties. One thing which you have to note is that the last uh, option which is given, if he should wish, 
may i avoid uh, may i avoiding both the unrepulsive uh, and unrepulsive abide in equanimity mindful and fully aware he abides in equanimity towards that mindful and fully aware that is wh- how one is noble one with developed faculties so this uh, uh, phrase is also used in parinibbana sutta where the buddha has been explained to have uh, fallen ill so in parinibbana sutta there is a, a couple of times uh, the buddha has fallen ill because he is of advanced age and he is traveling and he also sometimes has uh, eaten something and he has a, a digestive uh, problem has uh, arisen so uh, the buddha uh, uh, has been uh, arise in the body but uh, the phrase which has been used is uh, the same which has been uh, mentioned over here that he abides in equanimity towards that mindful and fully aware so the the un, uh, uh, the painful feelings may come up but the uh, arahan is uh, able to recognize this is there and still stay in equanimity so he has developed uh, the faculties so ananda the supreme development of the faculties in the noble one's di- disciple has been taught by me the disciple in training higher training who has entered upon the way has been taught by me and the noble one with developed fac- uh, faculties has been taught by me so at uh, all the three levels he has been uh, the buddha has been teaching one is the entry uh, uh, or anybody who uh, starts out with the training one who has entered the path and one who has developed the path what should be done for his disciples out of compassion by a teacher who seeks their welfare and has compassion for them that i have done for you ananda there are these roots of trees this empty huts meditate ananda do not delay or else you will regret it later this is our instruction to you this is what the blessed one said when rebel ananda was satisfied and delighted in the blessed one's word so this sutta is a uh, kind of pointing out how one uh, develops uh, their reaction and uh, the most important uh, aspect of this uh sutta as i can uh, uh gauge from it is how uh, the right effort uh, has to be applied that uh, is taught by bante vimar ramsi as six rs that is recognizing what is there uh, releasing it uh, relax and uh, re smile other uh, uh, steps uh, buddha I means has taught in uh, the meditation like uh, uh anapanasati uh, so relaxation has been uh, taught so that has been uh, added to this uh, uh, formula by bante vimaram singh and then he returns to what uh, is the object of meditation over here the object med- meditation is equanimity so by uh, knowing how to redirect your attention one can uh, develop uh, their faculties that is uh, how we react to what is happening that has uh, that can be uh, kind of develop when we are uh, aware of how to understand what has arisen and what is the uh, correct way of uh, reacting to what has arisen so this has been the sutta uh, is there any uh, questions uh, and then i'll op- i'm open for questions now so regarding the sutta if the, uh, somebody wants to ask the question or uh, on the other sutta which we had angutra nikaya so or uh, if there is any questions regarding meditation or a general questions somebody can ask is there any uh, questions any comments is uh, was this clear the sutta the message uh, the sutta is given can somebody hear me uh, you are able to hear me no yes it's clear bond <laughs> thank you for reading the sutra so any questions are you uh, clear about it any comments very clear very clear about it <laughs> okay <laughs> so sara do you have any question yes it it's it's not 
exactly a question yet, but um, because I can't work it out in my own mind, the question. <laughs> but uh, the the area of disenchantment and dispassion, I I feel is something that is a very um, it's a very big deal, and I and I and I feel it it has the potential to be a very big deal uh, in in lay life in a, in a way that is is more challenging than as a as a monastic, um, simply because of what it starts to unpick and the interactions that uh, or the ways in which that you you've um, enjoyed and had pleasure in your life and so it's a it's an area that i think is 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 tricky and it's something that would be um yeah helpful to to have discussion around i sort of un i i understand as a general uh leaning that we bring towards the wholesome and everything and that and that's the way to go but I, cert I certainly sort of feel things in myself have really changed and, and, and in other people I know. And it, it then becomes a more, uh, you can sort of start to feel more um, lonely in the, uh, the ways in which you used to inhabit your life. It doesn't mean you're, um, I just mean in the, in the, in the daily life, the maybe some of the friendships that you would have had and how they uh, operated and you you don't want to engage in the same way as before so it's a sort of a stepping aside of some of the uh i suppose the the habits of the way your life used to be um so it feels that it's quite on it could be quite unpicking and uh, which is in the end a good, a good thing Mm -hmm. But it's sort of on the way through. I, I think it's it, it it can be a bit hard. So the one way of looking at this is also that how uh, one develops uh, uh, one's faculties or one's uh, practice. It automatically goes flows from one thing to another. Now uh, in the Anguttara Nikaya only this uh, I think the next uh, 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 the Buddha says uh, about the same steps is. That once one has good sila, then uh, the, uh, there is no volitional uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, intention required for the uh, person to have a joy arise. So uh, this can happen uh, based on how you are putting the inputs because everything is dependent on the cause and that effect will come on its own. So when you are practicing, the next step uh, of uh, the uh, practice will automatically arise uh, based on how you fulfill the first step. That is, if you fulfill the Sheila part uh, completely, then uh, the joy, uh, uh, non-regret will automatically arise. When non-regret is there, then joy will arise. When no joy is there, then uh, uh, the uh, uh, tranquility will arise. And then uh, 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 collectedness is there, and then you progress. So in this uh, way, uh, certain aspects can be difficult, like uh, because what happens is there is also a, 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 our group of people which we are kind of uh, with have a certain amount of agreeability with us. So if, uh, say, uh, they agree on a certain amount of uh, uh, kind of having uh, emotions of anger, of dissatisfaction, and you uh, also had that same amount of uh, dissatisfaction, anger, and all those uh, uh, emotions. So then they, they, were, uh, they were kind of being able to kind of relate to the other person. So once uh, uh, one person has a change of uh, kind of uh, understanding uh, of uh, what, how the things are happening, how it is arising, how it is passing away, and uh, uh, there is a kind of a, uh, uh, automatic six R. It happens when there is anger comes up. If there is a, a, a dissatisfaction comes up, uh, one can let go of the dissatisfaction and uh, see the wholesome. Uh, so all those things which happens, then uh, there is a kind of a, uh, a disconnect with the, uh, the people, and uh, that is the reason we should kind of develop uh, 
uh, the meta the meta is the most uh, important uh, fa factor because when you are having developed meta then we can be also uh, compassionate uh, then uh, corona is there mudita is there all those things can develop in a, a one set you know then uh, compassion develops and it uh, develops into the sympathetic joy and then uh, equanimity develops so we have to develop in a ma manner whereby we can kind of understand the other people and be kind of accommodative to their disagreement with us. The other aspect is that uh, the Buddha says is that uh, the holy life about the holy life, uh, the Buddha also was uh, asked by Ananda that uh, uh, the holy life seems to be the half of the uh, holy life seems to be the good companions. The Buddha says that uh, at actually uh, he would say that the whole of the holy life is on the good companions. And one of the uh, suttas Buddha says in the uh, Dhammapada also this uh, is mentioned, is that if you don't find a compatible uh, person, a wholesome person, a partner, then it is uh, good to uh, walk the holy, pa holy uh, path alone. So he's talking about the monks and uh, how it is there, but in a lay life that is not possible. Uh, uh, so we cannot be kind of totally uh, uh, away or we cannot cut off people. Uh, totally. So we have to have compassion. We have to develop metta. We have to develop compassion, uh, mudita and uh, karuna. So we have to develop those aspects in us so we can still have interactions and uh, be able to be kind and forgiving to uh, other people. And thus we can uh, uh, continue our interactions. There are many uh, 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 occasions where the Buddha has uh, uh, mentioned uh, there are anagamis who have not uh, uh, taken robes or, or they could have uh, become arhans uh, in one day uh, of the taking the robe or the same day when they take up the robes because uh, the Buddha said that they had responsibilities. So one is the case when the Buddha Kasapa uh, uh, under whom uh, the Buddha kind of took the uh, vow of uh, Bodhisattva. So he uh, had a disciple, Buddha Kasapa, who had blind parents and he had to take care of the parents. So he uh, lived his life with uh, complete Sheila and uh, he uh, uh, nearly did not have any commercial, uh, uh, he, he did not do any commercial activity. He used to, he was a potter. So he used to make potteries and just put them up across uh, his uh, front yard. And people used to take what they wanted and they, he used, to, they used to give what they uh, kind of uh, thought correct for the uh, thing. Uh, one example of this is uh, in India currently is in uh, Arumindo Ashram. There, there are many uh, shops over there. One is a tea shop where uh, you can go and have the tea and there's a box over there and you can put whatever amount you want to put on the box. So that, uh, that is an example in the current day. So the, the, the uh, uh, when one is developed, uh, they can still interact and they can still live in the world uh, and uh, kind of interact with uh, the uh, people around. But you have to have the, uh, uh, the correct uh, kind of uh, framework in dealing with those uh, people, which is uh, the metta, karuna, mudita, upekha. So, so if there is somebody is annoying, then Upekha comes into uh, act. You can be economist. The, the, what the words are coming in are disagreeable, but you uh, decide to uh, uh, recognize, release, relax, smile, and be on economy. So this way we can be with people. Is thank you, Pan. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, Sarmaji, you have any question? Yes, I have a question. Yes. <laughs> With regard to discipline. Yes. That is more important what you said. And 11 faculties, the purpose and benefit of all the 11 faculties have to be developed. And then only that's, that this enchantment will lead to other things. The repulsive or non-repulsive there, it, it matters very much. Uh, uh, one should be non-repulsive and also repulsive. In repul uh, in, uh, he should be non-repulsive, in repulsive. Likewise, uh, he should develop the equanimity and mindfulness. There the problem lies. Would you please 
give us some explanation there. That is the main drawback so, of the system. See, uh, one uh, uh, thing what you have to uh, understand is that uh, Buddha is talking about different levels. So the, uh, the first level, the Buddha says that you have to uh, keep equanimity in mind. Then the second uh, uh, stage when uh, uh, you are in, uh, uh, have entered the path, that is in Sotapanna uh, uh, or uh, above or, or that. Then at that point of time, you kind of understand the nature of the arisen. Uh, and when you have your understanding that time, you have that repulsiveness, which, uh, which is there in you. When you have developed it fully, then you can uh, direct your mind, say if there is an unpleasant uh, sensation which is happening, then you can uh, perceive it as a, a pleasant sensation. Or if there is an, uh, a, a pleasant sensation, you can uh, perceive it as unpleasant sensation because you have fully developed your faculty of that. How to uh, kind of understand understand what is arisen and how to kind of direct your mind towards the perception. So over here, when a person has uh, uh, developed to the arahant stage, or my, um, I suspect uh, to the uh, anagami stage, that time uh, that uh, the individual will be uh, have uh, access to the perception and how the perception uh, will be able, to, you will be have control over the perception. That is when you uh, kind of control the perception. And the other point we are talking about the uh, dispassion. This passion comes uh, uh, from knowing what is the reality of the things. When uh, you have uh, uh, understood the, uh, that everything which has arisen, uh, that uh, arisen uh, is uh, impermanent, is dukkha, is uh, impersonal. So when a person uh, kind of fully understands, and that also ha happens in stages. Uh, in Ganaka Moglana Sutta, Buddha is talking about how he goes about uh, uh, teaching people in uh, various stages. So that is also happening in stages. But uh, what happens is happens by your understanding, by your uh, uh, being able to look at it with the wisdom, the eyes of wisdom, you look at it, you look at it from the three characteristics and by looking at it and by understanding it, you kind of un, uh, develop your understanding. When your uh, understanding is developed, then the next step happens automatically. So if you want, what I can do is I'll try and see if I can open the um, Angutra Nikaya uh, and I'll give you the, uh, another, the next two sutta in the line. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I'll just read that. Uh, <laughs> so that is a sutta which kind of gives a little bit of uh, understanding of uh, how it happens. So this is the uh, sutta which is Angutra Nikaya, Book of Eleven, second. We uh, read the first sutta. This is called volition. Students, for a virtuous person, one whose behavior is virtuous, no volition need be exerted. Let non-regret arise in me. It is natural that non-regret arises in one who is virtuous, one whose behavior is virtuous. For one without regret, no volition need be exerted. Let joy arise in me. It is natural that joy arises in one without regret. For one who is joyful, no volition need be exerted. Let rapture arise in me. It is natural that rapture arises in one who is joyful. For one who, with a rapturous mind, no volition need be exerted. Let my body become tranquil. It is natural that the body of one with a rapturous mind is tranquil. For one tranquil in body, no volition need be exerted. Let me feel pleasure. It is natural that one tranquil in body feels pleasure. For one feeling pleasure, no volition need be exerted. Let my mind be concentrated or collected. It is natural that the mind of one feeling pleasure is collected. For one who is collected, no volition need be exerted. Let me know and see things as they really are. It is natural. 
that one who is collected knows and sees things as they really are. As this really are is the three characteristic that is impermanence, dukkha, and anatta. For one who knows and sees things as they really are, no volition need be exerted. Let me be disenchanted. It is natural that one who knows and sees things as they really are is disenchanted. For one who is disenchanted, no volition need be exerted. Let me become dispassionate. It is natural that one who is disenchanted becomes dispassionate. For one who is dispassionate, no volition need be exerted. Let me realize the knowledge and vision of liberation. It is natural that one who is dispassionate realizes the knowledge and vision of liberation. Thus, uh, students, the knowledge and vision of liberation is the purpose and benefit of dispassion. Dispassion is the purpose and benefit of disenchantment. Disenchantment is the purpose and benefit of the knowledge and vision of things as they really are. The knowledge and vision of things as they really are is the purpose and benefit of collectedness. Collectedness is the purpose and benefit of pleasure. Pleasure is the purpose and benefit of tranquility. Tranquility is the purpose and benefit of rapture. Rapture is the purpose and benefit of joy. Joy is the purpose and benefit of non-regret. And non-regret is the purpose and benefit of virtuous behavior. Thus, Students, one stage flows into the next stage. One stage fills up the next stage for going from the near shore to the far shore. Near shore and far shore, we are aware that this is a simile given uh, for near shore is the danger which we face and the far shore is where it is safe. So the Buddha says that you make a raft out of the sticks and uh, twigs and uh, wine, and uh, with the wine, uh, you uh, kind of uh, make a raft with the sticks, and then you go to the far shore, that is to the Nibbana. One other way the Buddha uh, kind of explains the Nibbana in stages is that one person who is uh, there in the sea, and he, uh, he drowns. So the person is a person who is going to the uh, lower worlds which is the animal, uh, the coast realms, and the hell realms. And the one person uh, keeps afloat, is the person who is kind of being reborn in a, uh, a good world, a human world, or a deva world. Then there is a person who sees an island that is like a sotapanna. He sees that there is an escape from what is uh, the co constant cycles of samsara. So he sees the island. The uh, Sagdagame is one who is uh, kind of uh, started his journey towards the island. That is the Sagdagame. Then uh, the, the, uh, the person who kind of uh, puts his foot down on the sand and he's wading through the water is like the Anagami, who is almost reached there. And the person uh, who is sitting there and uh, enjoying the safety of the island is a Arahan. So in this way also, the Buddha explains the near shore and the far shore. So the uh, near shore has the danger and the far shore is safe. So that is how you can uh, kind of explain this, uh, uh, this thing. And you can see that one thing is leading to another and that is kind of uh, creating a kind of uh, causes and condition for the next uh, stage to arise. So one keeps on the path, one keeps on doing what uh, one is supposed to do. The next stage will come. Uh, the time uh, which we are kind of, uh, uh, it is difficult for me to kind of understand time uh, because what time I have is uh, maybe 48 years I have uh, in my earth, okay? So I can relate to time from this perspective. But the Buddha is saying that the time is a long period. Uh, he mentions in many, many different ways. One uh, way he mentions is that, that just by your head getting cut, uh, the amount of blood which is there is more than the, all the uh, water in the oceans. So not every lifetime you have uh, had a, uh, such a gruesome death, but uh, we can uh, see that there are so many lifetimes we have uh, gone through. So even if we are doing this and uh, we have to uh, 
uh, be reborn for seven lifetimes. That is nothing compared to what uh, uh, the dukkha we have uh, faced. The Buddha says that one simile is that uh, he takes up a sand, uh, a, 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 a pinch of sand, and says that the dukkha which you have given up is like the sand in all the beaches in the world. And what remains is just uh, the pinch of sand if you are a sotapanna. So that is a level of uh, kind of uh, uh, giving up which we happens if you are a uh, sotapanna. So uh, whatever you are doing, you, if you keep on doing it, then the next stage uh, based on causes and condition will automatically arise. So one has to be patient and keep doing what one is doing and uh, eventually uh, the progress will happen because the Buddha says that like a uh, uh, hen sits on an eggs, it does not have any violation and uh, uh, this thing that the uh, egg should hatch, the, the should, chicks should come out. But because of the process or because of the act of sitting on the eggs, the eggs will hatch. So if you keep on doing uh, the six hours, if you keep on doing uh, putting your attention on the wholesome, then the progress will happen. So is there any other questions? Any clarifications? I think uh, everybody has understood. So uh, we will end this. Uh, and I have an announcement that we have invited uh, Rajiv Dinesh uh, to the Sunday class, uh, which will happen next uh, week. So next week or this week, I'm, I'm not sure how we have to consider uh, Sunday as the first day or the uh, last day of the week. But uh, 28, uh, uh, he will be invited at, at 2.30. Uh, so 2 o'clock, we start with a half an hour meditation. And at uh, 2.30, uh, Rajiv Dinesh will uh, give a talk. I have asked him to prepare a talk on sutta or a subject as he uh, feels fit. So I would request you everybody to come because uh, he has uh, been very successful in his meditation. Uh, he has uh, sat in interviews with uh, Bhante Vimal Ramsey. He started uh, his meditation with uh, David online course. So he's been in touch with David also. He teaches online uh, meditation uh, retreats and he is uh, going to eventually teach uh, physical retreats in uh, India whenever we are able to kind of uh, arrange them for him, his time also. So he was busy with his job uh, and he was not able to kind of uh, give 10 days. So let us see. Uh, so uh, he is coming and I would request you all to come and uh, uh, kind of uh, look at an another, another perspective because everything which I have, I am teaching and I am, I am giving is, uh, uh, there is a part of them is from my perspective. And there is a, a kind of flavor which uh, is added to this teaching. And when you listen to from some other's perspective, you will get a bit, a bit more flavor, a bit more understanding, a bit more angle to what you are uh, learning. So I request everybody to be there and uh, uh, we will be announcing and uh, please kind of forward to uh, anybody who uh, would be interested to join us, okay? Then we'll uh, end this uh, class uh, uh, now and with the sharing of merits. May suffering once be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.